What's up, good friends of the internet? You are pumping some intelligent thoughts into your eardrums. I'm Dustin Coyle. This shit is the Daily Wager for Tuesday, May number 16, the year of our Lord, 2017. <clears throat> Yesterday was kind of a squirrely one. Um... Great game. Great game seven between Washington and Boston. Let me pull up some shit real quick. Actually, I guess I should have been prepared for this moment before I got on the uh, on the airwaves here. Kelly Olynyk with 26 points. Uh, I think, what, 14 of them in the fourth quarter during the, uh, the point when they actually spread the game out. They win 115 to 105. I guess I should have said that. Boston does at home. They win the series four games to three. Um, Isaiah Thomas, 39 minutes. He has 29 points, 12 assists. Uh, great game for Isaiah there. Horford adds 15 points to downtown. Uh, two three-pointers made for him. Um, <clears throat> great game overall for uh, the Celtics, honestly. They were down at halftime. Looked like they could definitely lose. Bradley Beal goes for 38 points. Uh, 5 for 10 from downtown. Wall adds 18 points, 11 assists. Uh, 20 points, 10 rebounds for Otto Porter. Just not enough as the uh, the Celtics outscore him by, I think, 10 or 11 in the fourth quarter to win by 10. Uh, I kind of won some random-ass prop bets on that, too. For some reason, I thought um, I got uh, first team to score Boston, plus 105. Um, I'm guessing because Gortat is bigger than Al Horford. I was just looking through it. Uh, it was a minus 125 for Washington, whereas like the race to 10 points which was a, like a minus 125 or minus 145 or some shit for Boston. So I took that and won that Isaiah's free throw being the first points scored of the game. Lost the under, as you can tell, uh, 220 compared to 210 and a half. I was off by about 20 points. Look how fucking stupid I am on that one. Uh, and so really, I guess that's the only real downer of the, uh, the day, really. Uh, the Boston victory, the um, Boston to score first, along with that. Um, and then it's kind of setting us up here for the uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers-Boston Celtics matchup. And that brings us to today with Game 2, Western Conference Finals, 7 o'clock p.m., E-S to the motherfucking P-N. San Antonio at Golden State. Kawhi Leonard is doubtful. Um, I would say he is not likely to play. I think they're probably going to rest him for this game here. Um, because I think that they're going to... They're going to need him, and I, I'm sure that Popovich is really, really banking on winning the two games at home. So he's going to need a really a quality Kawhi Leonard there. Uh, so I think they're going to rest him here. Obviously, if he was ready to go, they, I mean, he'd play. But I think you know he's probably a little bit hurt still. That's what it seems like. Um, <sighs> Kevin Durant is probably going to put up 40 points in this game, I would imagine, if he doesn't play. I don't know who the fuck is going to guard him. Obviously, nobody matches up with Durant well. Kawhi... One of the best in the league. I truly believe uh, that he will fucking... He's probably going to put up like 40. I, I'm actually going to look and see what the uh, what the game props are for him. Looks like the over-under for uh, KD tonight is 27 and a half. Honestly, I would say that's a pretty good over. That's not bad. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he'll score in the 30s. He's going to be the catalyst in this game. Uh, he, he proved to be so in the third and fourth quarter of the last game. He's the guy that they can get the ball to when they need points. He's their MJ. Or, I mean, he's, he literally is the guy. He's the best scorer, you know, probably in the league. If you need a bucket, he's probably the best in the league at that. He can create off the dribble. He can shoot over the small guys. They really don't have anybody to stop him. So, I guess, let's do this uh, 27 and a half. Take the over on the 27 and a half for KD. Um... Assuming Kawhi doesn't play. If Kawhi play, let's wait until the fucking very back end of this shit. 
And if Kawhi doesn't play, let's take the 27.5 over for Kevin Durant. Let's take a look at the regular spread here for the Warriors. All right, 13.5 points. And a fucking 1,500 minus 1,500 money line. Um, I think it's money in the bank, so the 1,500, I'm going to take that. Sounds insane, but it, I've always, you know, kind of liked the big money line. Just because it's some kind of a guarantee. It, not really a guarantee. I mean, it's it's obviously not a guarantee. I mean, they almost lost game one uh, with a big money line. But I think that this one's probably a little bit out of reach for uh, for this. If Kawhi doesn't play, they're, they're not going to win this game. Like, they are just, this game could be a 30-point victory if, if Kawhi doesn't play. I mean, this could be a sketchy 120-88 to 88 type, uh, type basketball game. And honestly, one of the bad things about that is um, I'm sure that the Warriors would, or for the Spurs at least, the Warriors would actually end up getting a lot of rest. Uh, and the Spurs probably still wouldn't have any, uh, any real definitive answers on what they can do uh, offensively either without Kawhi in the game. So have to hope for a big game from LaMarcus, clearly. Uh, he's going to have to dominate down low. It's going to be easier said than done. He was pretty successful against Draymond. He looks huge posting Draymond up. And if he can do that and, and keep his little you know finger roll type action going on down low, uh, that'll that'll be their best chance to win. Especially if you get a good uh, performances from well, Ginobili will probably be necessary. <clears throat> Patty Mills will probably be even necessary. Um, just because of the playmakers for the team. Probably have to have a good shooting performance from Danny Green. You know, it'll it'll be a tough overall. Just just to even be competitive in this game, it'll be a tough uh, a tough road for the Spurs. So I like the money line. I don't even honestly that spread's not bad. I thought the spread was going to be like seventeen and a half or something like that. I think that uh, Popovich and all that is actually the reason the spread's not that much. After the Spurs showed what they could do the other day in Game Six against Houston without. Uh, Kawhi Leonard and they won by 30 or 39 excuse me you know I think that there's a lot of uh, a lot of belief in what Popovich can do with people alrighty let's take a look at some other shit that we might be able to pull a little bit of ducats out of at least make something interesting today how about the draft lottery later tonight actually I didn't uh, kind of forgot about that uh, one thing I like let's see where is it there we go uh, Boston the likelihood that Boston gets a top three pick via a trade with Brooklyn that already you know happened blah blah blah. We're like uh, minus one ninety five. Uh, I'll put some ducats on that. I think that I thought it would be higher than that, probably a minus three fifty or something like that. So the fact that it's a minus one ninety five, two to one odds that they get a top three pick, that which I think is. Um, the percentages are pretty fucking massive. It's like in the high 60s, 70% that they're going to do that. Um, I don't know. I think it's probably good odds there. I take that. And one other thing, trying to liven this up a touch. Where are we at? There it is. The series prices for the... Uh, look, looking at both of them. Yesterday... The, what I'm looking at um, on betonline.ag, uh, 3000 was a minus 3000 for Golden State on the series price. Without even another game being played, it's now a minus 4000 for the Warriors. Don't really care for that. I mean, it's definitely money in the bank, but it's that's so extreme. Um, and seeing as I already got them for like wh- whatever number it was, uh, like a minus 700 or something to win the, to win the West. Uh, basically, I already have them for the series price at a minus seven hundred. Then from earlier, but um, the Cavaliers Celtics series price, I'm looking at a minus six hundred right here uh, for the Cavs. That's good. That's actually better odds than it was yesterday or two days ago um, when the odds for the Cavs to win the East, which is effectively a series price, were minus seven fifty. So. The series prices here have actually gone in favor of uh, Boston and monetarily in favor of anybody who's uh, planning on placing uh, a slip on the Cavaliers. I like that. I, you know, 
as I've said earlier, I had him I had him earlier at like at a minus six hundred and minus seven hundred as well uh, to win the win the division or uh, to win the conference. Um, and now it effectively has gone less, and I'm going to probably double down on that and get him at minus six hundred as well. All righty, that's going to be the end of the show. Get out and get your bets in. Get your shit taken care of. Uh, I guess I'm doing an NBA w- weekly or so. No, I'm going to do a fucking, uh, excuse me, UFC 211 uh, recap here in a fucking second. Probably going to have myself a beer and uh, record a fucking fantastic, genuine podcast. Until I talk to you or you hear from my ass, seeing as I'm not talking to you at all. In about two hours, maybe even one. I love you.